Ah, uh, well, in that vein, what gets him the Medal of Honor is the Battle of Trevelyan Station. Should right? Say. Med Medal yeah. of Honor, not as big of a deal in the Civil War, because it was the only one the army gave you, more or less. They, they, uh, still, had, they still had a lot of room in Arlington Cemetery back then. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, there was, it, well, there was all the room, because Arlington Cemetery was Robert E. Lee's plantation. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> so, to make sort of a long story short here, uh, the Cavalry Corps intended to cut the Virginia Central Railroad at Trevelyan Station, right? Um, they encountered Confederate cavalry, and the fighting eventually progressed to this point, where the Confederates held a farmhouse and the Union held its outbuildings, right? Um, company C sent a man out to crawl on hands and knees to keep out of view of the Confederates uh, to report to Captain Furness that they were out of ammunition, and if the position fell, it might jeopardize the whole operation. So Frank Furness, he's got this large and impressive logistical and architectural head. And he decided to use his head, right? Which is, what if he put the box of ammo on his head and just sprinted over there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just going to take the thing that explodes, put it as close as possible to my head, just give it a shot. That's going to be a but, heavy box of ammunition, too. Yes. So he and Captain Walsh Mitchell both grabbed the box of ammo and just did that. They just sprinted over, gave him the ammo. <laughs> <laughs> then they then they sprinted back. <laughs> um we don't know what the Confederates thought of this, but they were confused and surprised enough that when when they did the first pass, there wasn't that much gunfire. It's just like, what are these idiots doing? <laughs> They're officers. <laughs> Just imagine calling time out on the battlefield. <laughs> and on the on a on a way back on a way back, they uh they got shot at a whole lot more. Uh, someone managed to put a bullet through Walsh Mitchell's hat. Jesus. Um, <laughs> I, the, the only way that fine. makes sense to me, if it's cavalry, it makes sense to me that that's like a Hardy hat. So it's like a big fucking cowboy hat looking thing. Yeah. But that's pretty prominent too. It's got like a like a. Sort of a gold, a gold like cord on it and everything. Like, she's the most most prominent uh, target imaginable. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, this is one of the most incredibly stupid things imaginable, and it worked flawlessly. Um, they were able to hold the position. Uh, the I love battle military itself. history. <laughs> <laughs> the battle. You just, just get to like the sort of the, the the history of the engagement, and it gets to, and then this guy, sort of blue link with a named person, decided to like go off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fuck it. Let's do it. Um, <laughs> yeah. And this was this this was this is widely regarded like that was a suicide mission. It didn't. It, oh, yeah. There's no chance that it was gonna work. Like, <laughs> it's very confusing. It's one of those things that you would sort of you would discourage now on the basis that you're like, you're too important to get killed for that. Like, yeah. ideally, right. you want to avoid getting killed at all, but in particular, you, you send a guy for that, you know? Yeah. Right, and it, it's like it's like, um, I think I think a couple different historians, but I know Mike Lewis points points to this incident as like, oh no, the motherfucker was like trying to die out there. Like every once in a mm. while, he was just like looking, looking for an opportunity, um, but he failed the skill issue. Uh, it didn't quite get himself killed. Um, <laughs> now, in fact, didn't even get a scratch on him. Uh, so, you know, the battle itself had mixed results. I don't know if you could say Trevelyan Station was a victory for the Union. They did destroy the railroad, but it was back up and running in two weeks. Um, so, but also the war was like winding down. So yeah, yeah, yeah. everyone saw this was, uh, uh, this was not going good places for the Confederates. Um, but at this point, this is late in the war. The original recruits for the Lancers had about three months left. Uh, they went to go fight in the Shenandoah Valley, right? Eventually they got caught up to by Mosby's Raiders. Um, and Mosby's Raiders took out most of their supplies 
and then most of the records of the unit right which is why we don't know confederate cavalry i mean this is like nathan bedford forest shit too it's the original recruiting base of the first clan fucking assholes some of the worst war criminals in the war incidentally um they took out most of the records uh and frank Furness actually wound up at this point with a desk job in washington dc trying to put those records back together um (laughs) But then, you know, his term of enlistment ended October 4th, 1863, and he decided to go back to Philadelphia, trade in the Lance for the T-Square and Compass. He was going to go back to architecture. (laughs) He was going to return to Philadelphia. Yeah, (laughs) after after some time off doing nice, relaxing stuff like fighting the Civil War, he was deciding (laughs) to go back to the the real cut and thrust of architecture. Well, yes. he goes back. He goes back for about two years, and then he he spends another year at Richard Morris Hunt's atelier um, before going into like actual private practice. Um, well, I, that's, a I, gap, I, that's a gap in resume, though. Yeah. Well, there's an inter- interesting uh, anecdote here uh, from from the uh, Frank Furness Architecture in the Violent Mind book, which is um, he he learned to swear at Hunt's office. And then actually <laughs> use that to uh, maintain military discipline more effectively than he would have otherwise. Oh, that's incredible! <laughs> yeah, that book that book is full of just the best the best little asides and quotes, right? Um, uh, do you want to oh, show off the next pic- the next slide, Ross? Oh yeah, yeah. We had a we had a picture here of the lancers with their lances. Um. Our boy Frank is right here. He was at this point captain of F Company, but this is him with I Company, which he he liked better. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Just doing epic troop shit, you know. Yes. And then uh, I, on the previous slide is actually the monument at Gettysburg that he designed uh, for his own unit. You can see they got the lances here, even though they weren't using them by that point. Um, right. Though so, I mean, those are those them. are those are ironwork. You know, um, yeah. they were definitely emblematic of the of the troop, but the, like the 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 flag part of those flags is actually metal. Um, oh, and then go and then yeah. So there's that there's that slide of the company, and then that's a like a Harper's illustration. Um, just just showing them all. Just like the yeah, we did, we didn't have enough guns, but we had more guns than the other guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Right. And and in oh, hindsight, and so, quite quite a fashionable quite a fashionable regiment, you know. Yes. It's very right. anachronistic. Uh, it's very fun. <laughs> it's really funny. Yeah. And so so like I I like to think I, have I don't to talk know exactly about what it zouaves is. at some point, my favorite <laughs> anachronism of the Civil War, because motherfuckers loved a zouave. Um and yeah, that's that's a whole story in itself. I've just had my microphone taken away by Pizza Boy. So I got it back <laughs> though. He's excited to talk about Zuav. Yes. Um. Uh, the other important thing, yeah, right. So, yeah. so Frank Furness enters the war. Or I think, I think on the left is a picture when he's like about twenty, like maybe in the late eighteen fifties, early eighteen sixties. Um, the one on the right is when he comes back, and he looks like he looks like Roz after like a six week bender. He's drunk and mad. <laughs> he also has a gun now. Like, yes. <laughs> and, and so and so there's all these there's all these stories that um just about like what working at his office was like, right? So he comes out of the he comes out of like the war in Richard Morris Hunt's office swearing like crazy. Uh his his office was at the end of the hall and he and he had a uh like a was it was it a, like a deer head or something, or was it a target? He would shoot the far a, end a of a, he would shoot on the, the far back. end for practice. There was a target on the back of the elevator shaft, I believe is the uh, <laughs> the, the story. <laughs> he painted a target on the back of the elevator shaft, and he would shoot at it when he was annoyed. <laughs> yeah, I, I won't, so I won't interns- say that a sort of like national PTSD is a good thing, right? I won't right. say that, but it leads you to some entertaining places and tracing the trajectories of like all of these Civil War guys as they come out of the war into their new thing. Like, the Civil War made Ambrose Bierce a goth. 
Like it turned him into a goth girl. <laughs> this, yeah. People people really got weird with it because like after you've seen all of this shit, after you've seen the sort of like horrors that prefigure World War One, you know, people just, like fucking stumbling around with their guts hanging out and shit. You you realize you can just do whatever you want, laws are fake, uh, and you can kill <laughs> anyone who tries to stop you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And so so Frank Furness embraced that with uh with with a plum. 